Hey, Planeswalkers, Mithras here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Welcome, my friends, to today's episode of Top Deck. We are covering a number one Dimmer Lurus Rogues deck today. So we need to refresh here with the Strixhaven season. This number one deck took down the 5K Strixhaven Championship Qualifier, um, placing first, obviously, because it's number one, um, by Constantine Hop. So very excited about this one here. Looking forward to playing it as we needed that refresh, like I said. And when it comes to rogues, either you love it, you hate it, you play it, or you break it. And today, we are playing it. So very excited about that nonetheless. If you happen to have questions or comments, let me know down below. Looking forward to answering those. Feel free to also hop in the Discord server. Plenty of folks that are willing to help as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you join there. That's in the description. And last but not least, the deck list and timestamps are available for you here down below where we will talk about the main board strategy objective of this list. We'll talk about how you're going to sideboard for your best of three. We're going to play competitive magic in both best of one and best of three here today. And then we'll close out with where this might sit in the meta, my friends. So looking forward to that. Flip me a like if you enjoyed today's video. Flip me a like if you don't like the deck. Um, and uh, other great ways to support the channel. So thank you. Uh, let's go ahead now. We'll talk about this deck here. Um, again, Rogues has been a very popular deck for a long time um certainly well positioned as many of us know um particularly with arnie um with the pro stuff going on previously um so how's that now fair in strixhaven well first off uh, when we talk about the strategy of objective of the stack it's certainly a tempo deck certainly playing on curve the ability to um do several things one mill our opponents out two actually beat our opponents down with rogues um and then three playing like a control deck um gives us multiple multiple opportunities um to certainly close down our matches win games and do a host of things so it is certainly an efficient deck nonetheless where is it set like i said it's a tempo deck it's not aggressive it's really kind of a mid-rangey deck just with a very wide variety of outs um, particularly mill being the one that most people uh do not like uh, me in particular being a mill fan i'm a huge fan but i don't play rogues every day so um, very excited to showcase this here for you today like i've said before i'm looking forward to seeing some of the changes what you'll notice is that nothing really new in the main board it's certainly very very efficient here um, but when it comes to sideboard uh, particularly one thing to call out here that I do want to mention so um, again strategy objective of the stack being on pace being on tempo being on curve lots and out lots of outs lots of draw um, big things to keep in mind and obviously we got the good old Lurus um, in this version which I also like the Lurus version the best um, in terms of being able to pull things back and getting value over time um, so as we bridge and move into our best of three here um, and talk about our cyborg and we'll break it down in terms of aggro mid-range and late game for you um, the biggest key in terms of the changes one is the output change from Arnie's um, by getting the dead weights here on the sideboard. The second piece as we move into Strixhaven that I certainly want to call it here is Test of Talents. So this deck has certainly evolved. Test of Talents is a great card um, for Mirror Match and for some of the late game stuff. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and then we have a few other things here um, certainly that have... Uh, kind of transcended um, the last couple of seasons. So really, really looking forward to that. Again, aggro, mid-range, and late game. So when we talk about aggro, these are things like Mono Red, Boros, Boros Renata. Um, we also got Naya in there. We also got Gruul, um, and some of those being bridge decks to mid-range. Um, there, what I like the best is probably Deadweight, uh, particularly taking off things like Mono Red, um, also Mono White aggro. Um, other good ones being those crippling fear that survived from Kaldaheim. Those are all very, very powerful things to keep in mind. Um, additionally, just to call out here in the mirror match, because it's a little bit different, Skyclave is going to be your pick. Um, also, on top of that, um, we got some control stuff that we can use, um, which is very important. And then, particularly against cycle decks, because they're becoming very popular again, um, Soul Guide Lantern is going to be a specialty pick here for those for those decks or other uh, graveyard hates mirror match and sacrifice stacks so that's a good segue for us in terms of mid-range so we talked about the sacrifice stacks those being rock dose jund um your traditional rock dose mid-range additionally in terms of bridge decks uh boros winata not a decks 
gruel, uh, those kinds of things as well. And then we begin to get into some of the traditional, is it Tempo, is it Prismaris or Prismari Dragons? Um, is it Prismaris? I'm saying that because I saw it earlier. I um, thought it was pretty good. Um, <laughs> is it Dragons, Prismari Dragons um, in that space? And uh, there we break it down again between that, that aggro uh, mid-range creature based stuff where you might potentially use dead weight as they get bigger in the mid-range, you're not necessarily gonna use that, so you'll have to keep that in mind. Um, and then also uh, beginning to get more on the control side where we might wanna use cling to dust if they have some of that graveyard stuff that we need to keep out, um, like we talked about Soul, Soul Guide Lantern as well. Um, but then additionally, as they move past that two, two spell, do we pull in that additional d disdainful stroke or do we go with the dis uh, talent, test of talents or mystical dispute, um, those kinds of things as well. Then as we move out of the mid range, we get to late game. Those late game decks are gonna be those team returns or team ultimatum. We have salt ultimatum um, or the salt emergent. Uh, additionally, we begin to do the salt control stuff, which I've done. You guys can check that out. Dimmer control as well. Um, also in that space, we got the doom decks um, and those things. So, and other kind of late game control decks, um, all great stuff here that we can use with Cling to Dust. Additionally, you're probably gonna look at uh, Disdainful Stroke, Test of Talents, and that Mystical Dispute. Um, so a very consistent deck, a uh, few things that you can change up, move in, move out. Um, the biggest ones are getting rid of Eliminate and Heartless Act if you're not playing the aggro. Um, so you'll flip those out. If you are playing the aggro, you'll pull things like Mystical Dispute out, flip in the dead weights, um, and become even more efficient, my friends. The big one we just got to keep an eye on is if they are mill decks. Um, and in terms of mill, I'm saying that they can use graveyard. Uh, we just want to make sure we're protected with Soul Guide and cling to dust. Again, then you'll figure out how you want to board there specifically. So that is how we're going to align against aggro mid range and late game decks. If you have questions, if you have comments, let me know. Happy to help. So with that, we're going to go now and play some best of one and best of three here today. Um, again, this deck is by Constantine uh, Hop. So congratulations on your 5k championship uh, qualifier takedown, my friend. Um, so we will move on really looking forward to this. Like I said, um, for those of you that didn't know, I just finished getting all my house ready <laughs> for um, uh, pictures uh, to get it sold. So I've talked about this before. So very excited to play some magic and focus here today. So um, absolutely check out the weekly um, as well. But here, I know you guys want to uh, watch me play some matches. So we are going to go into best of one. Um, like I said, a lot going on. So very happy to be playing here today. Um, let's work towards some nice, lovely feels goods, um, as I like to call them, uh, in our lovely arena matchup. Um, so no rogues. Uh, this is an interesting start. Even though we go first, I might I might keep it and play it like a control deck. Um, could be interesting. I'm also doing that because we're not hitting a rogue. Um, so I'm guessing it might be um, an aggro deck. Ooh, that's a good one to keep too. Um, we can certainly go to our turn two and turn three and play here. Yep, so we do have an aggro deck. So Crippling Fear would have been a very, very nice one for us to have. I'm actually gonna play this. And I'm doing that because that's gonna enable the Drown and the Lock. We're gonna go grab a Swamp because we'll get our second one there. Here we can kill anything. Um, now that's one, which is perfect here. And we'll be able to decide that again. Um, we can either counter, which I may do. I can do that. And we'll see what we hit here. Now, rogues, uh, this stuff's actually a pretty tough matchup for us. Monoretos, and additionally the fact that we didn't get any creatures um, makes it a tougher lineup here. Certainly something that might have been worth, um, and I'm going to counter, might have been worth um, switching out because we know that it's going to be more aggro dominated. However, at the same time, we we do have a good host of options here. Get rid of that. It's that too, so we can certainly use that. I 
I am gonna kill this. And I'm I'm doing that for one reason in particular. I can't get get a three anyway, but I can still kill it if they play it. We'll pull that over now. Now again, we got a few things we can do here. So we'll wait a turn. No rush on Larus. We're not quite there yet. So now we have enough to protect again. So they need two burns here. They might have it. There's one. They didn't have a second there. So they would have had a top deck up. Now we have into the story and we can obviously play of one mind. So we are still okay here. They'll probably pop that. Nope, they did not. Let's grab a blue. So we'll wait to see if we can clip them with into the story. Hopefully we can draw a counter. There we go. That's great top deck for us. Well, great draw for us. We'll do that. Giving me a better of one mind. And a super fast way for us to get a ton of stuff back. Woo. Feels good, huh? Now we still have our mystical dispute. We'll counter that. Should have done the thief guild, but we'll do this. We'll pay three. I'll well, actually, we'll wait.
Now we'll pay three. Oop, we'll crack this guy, sorry. Ah! Crack and pay three. Um, there we go. Boom! Super nasty, very efficient. We played it right. Um for what we started with against an aggro deck. It worked out. Obviously, very tempo hit what we needed in terms of answers, but this deck is always full of answers. Seriously. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll play our next best of one match here. And the reality is, Mono Red's actually a favorite deck against Rogues. I don't care what you tell me. Um, when I play my Mono Rogues or Mono Red deck, Mono Rogues deck, um, it's certainly favored. Plus those in the Discord server. Um, I will keep this because uh, I got counter and draw. Um, we're also saying the same thing. So they were uh, they were doing their best to share their losses and uh, not happy with with mono red. So. This is a little bit different matchup here. Definitely a little bit different. Um, we can do a few things. I need the two so I can play the Fable next turn. That's really nice. So they're off right now. Just slightly. Um, if I were them, I'd pull, I'd pull Drown in the Lock. There you go. It's the right play. Well played. Um, we will definitely do this. Because we need to keep moving. Now I played this so that we don't run into a problem here. Now I'll probably flip the enforcer in. I'll think about it. I'm doing this to prevent the seasoned hell blade, at least for one more turn. Trying to slow down damage just to just to here. So I need to block again. Um, maybe I could take six. This is a hard counter here. I know, what are they at? 35. Going to block. Give me one more turn. So as long as they don't drop an elite spellbinder, we still have a slight chance. 
Oh, of course, the Faceless Haven's good enough for lethal. They got the land that they needed. Oh, bummer. So that one's a much harder matchup because you can't move the stuff off the board um, as well. Now, granted, we didn't have, we got kind of flooded there on lands um, and not a lot of options. So that was the flip side of the first match. Um, and that's the way magic works. All right, we got Marv here in our second or third match, best of one today. Um, so let's see what we got going on. We got a wide variety of stuff. I still like this. Um, your match. We'll keep this. I'm going to keep it because I got these. Yes, that is exactly what I was expecting. Oh, the double, the double rune is going to ruin me. It's definitely going to ruin me. And that's going to hurt because I do not have enough stuff right now. Oh, this will be a good one to come back from. Lots and lots of rogues, my friends. We have enough to mill him. We have enough to trade on it. See if they counter. Let's go with another blue. All depends on how they play here. Problem is we don't have the right cards. And I knew that, but there wasn't anything that was going to change it. They'll play Lurus, and we're going to be hosed. Absolutely hosed. Which is too bad. So in that play, the real problem for us was honestly the tempo. Um, was 200% the tempo. Now we could have let them hit in and then played tried to play around that, but we're at eight. We were in such a worse position already. Um, there wasn't much we could do because of the double rune crab at the beginning. And we got ours much, much later. And we can't counter against the rune at this point. We don't have the crippling fear. Um, and we don't have any of the direct kill spells. So we're good here. We're not coming back from that. All right, on to our best of three. So for those of you that play it, beat it, like it, don't like it, we're certainly not on the winning side today. But 
nonetheless that is how magic goes so let's go ahead and play our best of three today let's see if we can flip into um obviously some of the new stuff in the deck tech um but we'll see how it goes obviously so in best of one we went um one and two we actually beat the hardest of the three decks in my opinion one that generally wins a lot which is mono red now mono white certainly a hard hard matchup um for this one but let's go ahead so now now we get the double room crab but we don't get the get the uh temple of uh well straight up land so we'll see we'll play from here we can at least hopefully get uh we'll get rid of that for now Hopefully, you get our uh, rune crabs on. Looks like a Boros would not a deck. Find out pretty quickly, I'm sure. Get rid of that. So we're going to have plenty of these guys. We need to get some kill spells. Alright, so good news. Banata's not coming yet, so we can do that. Certainly, we could have played the Fabled. Yeah, it's definitely Banata. So, if we would have played the Fabled uh, instead, we could have we could have um, drew with that, which would have been big. So the big thing here is going to be pulling Lurus back now. So we're going to do this because we'll play Lurus. We'll pull it back anyway. We have Agademes if we need. There's one Monada. So if they hit the Lurus here, which is going to happen, like we talked about, we still have the Agadines, so that was one of the reasons why I did that. Because we needed to survive at least one more turn there. All right, we're good. They did not get any lands. We kept milling them out. Um, so now what we can do, um, and the big one here that I like, so unfortunately we won't play Test the Talents uh, as long as we don't need Disdainful Stroke either. Um, as long as we keep removing a lot of the stuff that they have, we'll be okay. So we can drop and say, please, Mystical, we just need to remove on the board, um, which means these cards here. Um, that will help us. And then we just pull out um, and just make sure we kill Winata when it hits the board. All right. So what do we want to do here? Let's do two Crippling Fears. And we'll go from there. Important to remove the lower bodied creatures, um, which is all we need to do to lock this in. <sighs> That's tough, man. We've had some crazy, crazy start hands. This is much better. Not much, but we'll do it. Uh, we'll get rid of one of these. Uh, yeah, one of them.
We have more than two lands. So if they attack in, they probably have our lovely, lovely. All right, we're good there. We can live with that. Let's get rid of that. There's the prof. Let's we'll see what they pull. They need a land. We need the crippling fear. Right, that's a good one. Let's grab that. So we can kill with those. Problem is going to be selfless saviors here, so I should actually counter. I could counter that. Could have countered that. The problem is, if I counter it, they just needed the one anyway. Um, we're going to run into a problem trying to block off the board anyway. This I'm going to counter. We're going to have some problems on this, on this, uh, land make up here though because they got the double selfless so they're indicating that they have Winata which is fine there it is we'll make them play it All right, we'll go to the next one. So we'll flip in the other crippling fear here. Uh, instead, we still want to stay on task. Dead weight's still good. Merfolk's still good. Could play sixty-one. Um, any lands? Twenty-four. That's a lot for me. Um, I'm gonna drop an island. All right, there we go. On a low curve deck. Alucard 98. All right, third and final best of three match. We'll play first. Oh, the double crab. I This is so risky if I play it. I'm going to try it, though. Super, super risky. We need the black now. Absolutely. There we go. This works.
So we can block. We can block. Sack if we need to. Selfless is the one that we actually got to get off the battlefield here. There we go. Move that over now. The savior is the one we need off the drop. That's the problem. That was the one problem that opened me up pretty badly here. Was the savior. I need another swamp. If I can get a swamp, I can live through this. Not what I needed. Absolutely not what I needed. Um, so we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. So can we come back is the question. We can block everything if we need to. That's 12. Let's see if we get that land. Here we go. We're at 26. That's not enough. No matter what I play here, um, I can't win. That's, they have it. Um, I can double kill. It's not gonna matter, um, cause they still got enough guys. We can't split enough. Um, I could do this, but they're still gonna have way too much um, on the board. So it's a good game. All right. There we go, Planeswalkers. No chance. So we got rolled over by Boros Winata as a rogue Zach. But to be honest, we didn't have the right makeup on those two matches we lost. We had a decent one on the one that we won, but we certainly, they got they got hoes on the mana. So um, happens both ways. We know it. Um, but let's go ahead and look at today's deck. So... Again, love it, hate it, play it or break it. Today we played it and we certainly got broken. So um, unfortunate, but really like what we have going on with the new Rogues deck. Um, to recap here in best of one, uh, we went one in, in two. And then in best of three, we lost to a Boros Winata deck. We went one in two. Um, certainly a very, very popular deck. Um, nonetheless, in terms of a lot of the stuff out there with the new meta, um, I know I, with my uh, Friday night uh, meta post, many of you actually asked me about Boros Winata. Um, but where does this sit uh, in the tier list right now? So um, in terms of meta, it's actually probably tier two uh, for best of one, to be honest. Um, it's it's on the high end of tier two, potentially tier one, um, depending on, you know, again, how big it gets and how many decks, um, as we usually say. But right now, certainly uh, probably tier two, top of tier two. Um, and then in best of three, it does tend to be a stronger deck. Um, and it tends to have a higher win rate than Boros Winata, 
Um, unfortunately, we did not overcome that. Mono Red Snow is the harder deck um, for this one to beat, but we did beat it. So uh, interesting day nonetheless in terms of kind of the dynamics of the win rates and what typically happens and what makes sense. Um, and kind of reverse. So fun, fun way. We see how it goes. Again, that is magic, my friends. So uh, questions or comments, let me know down below. Happy to help. Um, again, feel free to hop in the Discord server. It's there for you in the details along with the deck list. Flip me a like if you enjoyed today's video. Flip me a like if you enjoyed seeing me get beat down. Flip me a like if you uh, if you like the deck or don't like it. So um, Planeswalkers, stay safe. Happy to do the uh, Luris Rogues deck here again. Um, it's been some time since we ran one, but great to get these renditions and updates. Um, certainly Test of Talents is going to be the key card um, that you're going to be boarding or main boarding um, from our Strixhaven uh, set release here. It's a great card. So um, stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Check out the Friday Night Meta uh, video uh, uh, post as well. I have that on my website. Lots of great information there for you um, and available. We'll continue to do top decks. Um, Twitch sessions coming up this week. I did take Thursday off this previous one just because I had too much going on uh, trying to get my house ready. So um, we'll see you soon. Take care. Have a great weekend. Lots of fun things coming your way. Mithras out.